Astronomers have discovered the most massive stellar black hole ever spotted in our home Milky Way galaxy. This newly found space monster is 33 times bigger than the Sun and sits 2,000 light years away from us. Until recently, the largest stellar black hole found residing in our galaxy has been around 20 times as big as our star in terms of mass. As for the average stellar mass black hole, it's usually about 10 times as hefty as the Sun. Scientists from the European Southern Observatory's Gaia mission spotted the giant black hole after a star started to wobble while orbiting in that area. The black hole got the name of Gaia BH3. The proximity of this space object to Earth makes it the second closest black hole to our planet ever discovered. The nearest one is called Gaia BH1. It's hanging out around 1,560 light years away from us. This uncomfortably close neighbor has a mass of about 9.6 times that of the Sun. It means that it's way smaller than the newly found black hole. Gaia BH3 is located in the Aguila constellation. From Earth, it seems to have the shape of an eagle. Interestingly, astronomers didn't expect to find a high-mass black hole lurking so relatively close to Earth and remaining undetected for so long. Okay, we can probably admit that this stellar black hole is just a small fry compared to supermassive black holes like the one that dominates the center of the Milky Way. I'm talking about Sagittarius A star. This space giant has a mass of 4.2 million times that of the Sun. While a stellar black hole forms when a star collapses, supermassive black giants have their own ways of seeing the light of day. They are usually the result of mergers of progressively larger and larger black holes. We'll talk about that later. First, let's speak a bit more about how stellar black holes form. When stars near the end of their lives, they typically inflate, lose a lot of mass, and cool to form what we know as white dwarfs. Such massive stellar black holes as Gaia BH3 are believed to form when a star doesn't contain heavy elements and loses not so much mass over its lifetime. Such stars are called metal poor. Afterward, instead of cooling into a white dwarf, this star collapses into a black hole. The companion of Gaia BH3 is a very metal poor star. It suggests that the star that collapsed and formed BH3 was metal poor too. Astronomers know of about 50 stellar black holes in the Milky Way. Some black holes are larger than others. You see, the universe is filled with black holes. Some of them are sprinkled randomly throughout galaxies. Others, those giants we know as supermassive black holes, sit at the center of galaxies. While stellar black holes are usually just a few times bigger than the Sun, such space monsters can weigh from a million to a billion solar masses. But even though they're so much heavier than our star, they're packed into a relatively small area. On a cosmic scale, of course. The size of our solar system or so. Some astronomers think supermassive black holes could form by several stars colliding and collapsing at once, while other experts state that such space objects might have started growing several billion years ago. At first, a small seed appears somewhere out there in space, which then gradually increases in mass to form a black hole. This seed does it through the process of accretion, which basically means gathering more and more matter around itself. Besides the absence of any precise information about the formation of black holes, there's also the black hole information paradox. If a black hole has some mass, and as we know, these spaced objects have a lot of it, then, according to the first law of thermodynamics, it should have a temperature. And, according to the second law of thermodynamics, it should also radiate heat. Stephen Hawking showed that black holes are supposed to emit radiation too. These days, this kind of radiation is called Hawking radiation. It should form at the boundary of a black hole. But after proving it, Hawking pointed out a paradox. If a black hole is capable of evaporating, some of the information it contains can be lost forever. The problem is that the information contained in thermal radiation emitted by a black hole gets degraded. It doesn't repeat any information about the matter swallowed by a black hole before. 
Such an irreversible loss of information contradicts one of the basic principles of quantum mechanics. Physical systems that change over time cannot create or destroy information. It means we must be missing something. Both physicists and mathematicians have tried to come up with different ideas, but they ended with pretty weird results. Some have even claimed that the universe could be holographic. It means that the universe that we know and love is actually the result of some mysterious interactions at the infinitely distant boundary. I told you, black holes are really strange. At the same time, we have definitely found space objects that seem to have the properties of black holes. For example, look at this image of black hole M87 star. It certainly looks like a physical object, but what if black holes don't exist at all? There's an idea that black holes are actually gravistars, a blend of gravity, vacuum, and stars. This theory was first proposed in 2001 by Emil Matola and Pavel O. Mazur. They hypothesized that at one point during the collapse of a large star, intense gravity might transform its matter into a new state. It's similar to what occurs when atoms are cooled to such low energy states that they start acting like a single super atom. When we speak of gravistars, a star might collapse to the point of the event horizon, or the point of no return, and then its matter is transformed into a new state. It exerts enough outward pressure to prevent the star from collapsing into a physics-defying singularity. In gravistars, an ultra-thin, ultra-cold, and ultra-dark, indestructible shell surrounds heavily wrapped space-time. This new form of matter turns out to be very durable, but it's also a bit flexible, like a bubble. So anything that's trapped by the intense gravity of a gravistar and smashed into it gets obliterated and then assimilated into the shell of this bizarre space structure. One of the benefits of the gravistar theory is getting away with those messy paradoxes connected with information and singularities. But even though this idea sounds kind of cool, it doesn't explain the phenomena we observe. And we've definitely observed something that looks like black holes. On the other hand, look at this shadow. It isn't caused by the trapping of light in the event horizon. It's a slightly different phenomenon known as the gravitational redshift. It makes light lose energy when it moves through a region with a powerful gravitational field. So, potentially, it could be a gravistar. When the light emitted from the regions close to the alternative objects reaches our telescopes, most of its energy is already lost to the gravitational field, which causes the appearance of this shadow. And still, like with black holes, things get complicated when you add rotation to the equation. Many experts are sure that gravistars would not be able to remain stable during rotation. But wait, it gets even more bizarre. There are suggestions that the insides of gravistars could contain a series of thicker shells. Those are known as nestars, something like a matryoshka doll. Of course, these theories aren't perfect yet. Astronomers still have a lot of work trying to build functioning models. There's also a chance that both black holes and gravistars exist. But then, we've got another problem on our hands. How can we distinguish between the two? Some theories suggest that these different kinds of space objects should also emit very different gravitational radiation. It could allow us to figure out whether we're looking at a gravistar or a traditional black hole. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.